Ladies and gentlemen, we please remain seated and silent for the father of the bride. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome and thanks for coming to Fiona and Stuart's wedding. Kate and I hope you enjoyed the ceremony and now enjoy the reception at this lovely venue. Before going further, I would like to point out that this speech was written under duress <laughs> <laughs> and was vetted by Fong on behalf of Fiona. <laughs> but the rest is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Kate and I would like to welcome Stuart into our family. We haven't known him for all that long. <laughs> Seems a nice guy. <laughs> a bit quiet. Right. Obedient. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, they've been together for what, 17 years? 18. 18. 18. 18. They've engaged for 14. Right. They moved East Edinburgh in 1999 as Stuart was starting at Napier University. And you could say that uh, they've started married life in an ex-asylum. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now Fiona. <laughs> Here we go. Who may be small, but she more than makes up for this in attitude. She started a life of independence when she was only two. When she stood in a stool one evening, opened the front door and ran down the road in her nightie. Her bid for escape was soon cut short. <laughs> and she used to knock at one of our neighbours round about the same time quite often, bang on her door and shout, Jean Orr, I want in. <laughs> so, on to the next bit. <laughs> when her and her partner in crime, Alison, discovered alcohol. <laughs> she says drink. Aunt Jean was a bad influence. <laughs> On holiday in Spain, aged about 14 or 15, they managed to slip away from us most nights and then they came back sometime later, later having told us they had a couple of shandies. <laughs> Years later, we discovered they were drinking black Russians and tequila slammers. <laughs> True. And a few years later, Fiona and her pal Sharon went on holiday yes, to Newquay by train, sporting t-shirts which said on it, keep Scotland tidy, throw all your rubbish in England. <laughs> Make a few booze there. <laughs> Nay, boo, you're fine. Joan also deludes herself that she has a great knowledge of everything, just like her aunt Joan. <laughs> but despite this, she can be pretty dim at times. For example, being driven back to Edinburgh, she noticed everything was very brightly lit as we're passing white car my dot. And she politely inquired if this was a new Greyhead shopping centre. <laughs> So she was informed that this was in fact Glasgow Airport. <laughs> Another time in a taxi, where her and Pauline were heading home back along Bass Street after a night out, she wondered why all the cars on the left hand side were travelling so slowly. Pauline had to point out they were in fact hard. <laughs> in spite of all this, She's proved to be an exceptional daughter and a loving and caring sister, auntie, niece, and now wife. I'm a very proud of her. Yeah. And now a word of advice to you, Stuart. <laughs> you can change your job many times, but you'll always come home to the same boss. <laughs> hey. Actually, I'm a bit worried about Stuart. After he was issued with a small ultimatum recently, his dad asked him if he was a man or a mouse. <laughs> he says, I don't know, I'll have to ask Fiona. <laughs> hey. What was your reply? <laughs> quite mature. But recently came home from work to find Stuart in the bath and no dinner on the table. She stomped straight into the bathroom and sank all his boats. <laughs> 
Well, you'd be glad to know that I'm almost finished. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you all again for managing to come here on this lovely day. Thanks especially also to Maureen and Johnny for all their help and for raising such a well-mannered, considerate and laid-back son. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please like to join me now in a toast to the bride and groom? Oh, dang it. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. I'm going to have to do my bit now. Oh, dear.